Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Racha Kodash. Double honors to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone, and peace and blessings to the elect. And um, in this lesson, I wanted to deal with a topic that's uh, very um, important to understand. Okay, as we read the uh, scriptures, you know, there are various accounts, various precepts that, you know, when put together, they convey a certain or a specific and particular message, which is echoed really throughout the whole Bible. All right. And that's dealing with uh, the fear of the Lord. But more so the time, like when, when should you really be afraid? All right. When should you really be afraid? When you know, like you have wronged Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. Now, we understand that we don't have remembrance of any of our past lives. And of course, we're not perfect. You know, of course, we went off, you know, in our past lives. We've done things that we don't even know we've done. Right. And that's why you may go through certain things now and today. And the Lord may be, you know, uh, uh, um, chastising you for something you may have done. OK. And it may not be in this life. OK. Nevertheless. And that's why Micah said he was going to. I'm. Matter of fact, let me get it real quick. All right, that's why uh, the prophet Micah made this statement right here in the book of uh, Micah, chapter 7, verse 9. It says, I will bear the indignation of the Lord, Yahweh, because I have sinned against him until he plead my cause and execute judgment for me. He will bring me forth to the light and shall and I shall behold his righteousness. And Micah was a prophet. And yeah, we're, you know, we're prophets, we're men of the Lord, but we're not perfect. Okay. We're still men. Okay. King David, look at, look at what King David did. And he was a man after the most high's heart. Okay. So we still have errors in our ways. Nevertheless, you know, we're, we're constantly trying and making supplication and making our bodies a living sacrifice onto Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. But now dealing with, um, this instance, right? In this life, things, you know, and things you can you can keep count of. If you there's a reason why when when you go off, if you have the, the fear of the Lord within you, you you become you you ex you express just that the fear of the Lord. You become very afraid. All right, you know if it's accidental or however it plays out, you become very afraid. You know if a demon hops on you and you think something or you know it makes you do something, and then it hops off you. You, you become very, very, very afraid, you know, because you know that Yahweh Bashim Yahusha is looking at you and you know that there's some, something is coming. You, you know that there's something that's going to come your way and it's not going to be good because you just did some shit, whatever it may be. And that's the point where you should truly be afraid because at that point, it's not going to be about Satan or Esau or anybody else but Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai because whether you're driving and your car catches a flat tire and you're stuck out in the cold for 18 hours or a car T-boned you and wrecks your car but you know you're fine but you just can't afford to fix it or something happens to you regardless of how it happens you know that the Heavenly Father Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai was the cause of it and you know why they did it. So you know something is going to come your way, but you know where it's going to come from because nothing happens without the sanctioning of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. However, if you are one that is fervently and constantly serving the Lord, you know, doing the best you can, okay, you know, and, and praying for forgiveness. This is why it's so important to pray for forgiveness because you don't know you know, things that you may have done that may have upset the Lord, but you just never knew. It never came into your remembrance. It is, you know, when you read in the book of Leviticus, going into the uh, the sin offerings and so on and so forth, there, there, there's, there's a certain part where it's worded that if a man does something that's going off and it comes to his mind, right? It comes to either it comes to his remembrance or it comes to his mind, then he's going to go and, and, you know, get whatever uh um you know whatever animal is required for that for that uh um for that sin offering 
You see? Because sometimes you do something and you don't know, or it, it doesn't, it never comes to your mind. It never, it never occurs onto you until it does. And sometimes it just never occurs to you and you think you're fine, but then you actually pissed off the Lord or you actually went off. So we have to constantly pray for forgiveness because we don't know, you know, if we we're, we're you know, we're doing something or we're, we're in the habit of something or we've done something that the Lord may not jack you up for, but it's still going off. And if it, if it keeps on occurring, he's going to mess you up. You see, and we don't know. So that's why we have to constantly pray. So you may, you may have done something and then you don't know, and you're talking to, you're talking to another brother or saying, or you hear a video, you hear something and that something of that ball, uh, something of that topic comes up and then it occurs to you, oh, that's going off that you didn't know, but you've done it. So in your mind, you're like, oh shit. <laughs> you know, and then, then you you not then you you start being afraid, and then you you pray to the Lord. See, so that's when you should be afraid because if you like I said, if you if you are if the Lord sees you as one that's trying, and you're constantly trying to do what's right, of course you're not going to be perfect. But the scriptures say that all things work to the good of them that love you, Hashem Yahushai, which is in Romans the eighth chapter. Okay, so at that point you know. If the Lord is looking at you for good, there's absolutely no evil ever that can touch you. It doesn't matter what restrictions, what threats, what these devils come and put. It doesn't matter if the whole world is against you. There's nothing that is going to be able to touch you. Because the Heavenly Father causes what? Both good and evil. So let's go to that real quick in the book of Isaiah. And this is, these are you know, these are precepts that we bring out and it may seem basic, but it's it's crucial to understand these precepts. Like, what does this mean? OK, this is the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, 45, verse seven. It says, I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. So anything evil in the world, anything evil in existence, no matter how brutal it may be, no matter how peaceful it may be, it's all by the Heavenly Father. It's by design of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Okay? So if the Lord is looking at you for good, there's no, he's not going to create evil against you. There may be evil in the world, but the scripture says, shall not come nigh thy habitation. Okay, that means you're going to be protected. You're going to be taken care of. Um, now, I was also reading a precept here in the book of Sirach, which is uh, very interesting. So I'm going to bring it out real quick. And this is the book of uh, Ecclesiasticus or the book of Sirach, chapter 11, verse 17. It says, the gift of the Lord remaineth with the godly and his favor bringeth prosperity forever. So what is one of the main gifts of the heavenly father? Because he gives us many gifts, many spiritual gifts. But what's one of the main gifts that are very important that you receive of the Lord? Faith, right? It is a gift of it is a gift gift of the Lord, and it remaineth with the godly. That's why the godly throughout all their generations maintain that faith, even up until now. And it says here, and his favor bringeth prosperity forever. So that's what you want. You want to gain favor in the sight of the Lord. So with, 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 you know, these people threatening your jobs, threatening your family, threatening, you know, to, to come and round you up and throw you in a, in a concentration camp. Okay. Threatening, you know, all these things that are going on. Guess what? The only time you should be afraid is if you've wronged Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. But if you are truly trying to, sincerely trying to serve the Lord, that shouldn't make you afraid. Because, yeah, it's coming. But the Lord is the one who decides whether it's going to touch you or not, whether you're going to end up in there or not, whether you're going to be protected or not. It's all already set up by the Lord. There's nothing that you are going to do that's going to deviate from the lord's plans the plans are already set literally even if you whatever you decide to do the lord has said it that you are going to do that okay and if you are someone like i said that he's watching over for good then whatever it is you're going to do whatever 
that's going to cause and how things are going to play out, it'll always be for your benefit. So it's not it's not for you to try and think of a masterful plan. Uh, when this happens, I'm going to do this and then go here and do this. What is, what, if that's not the Lord's plan, then the situation will, will not permit it for you to be able to enact your plan. And you're just going to have to go with the flow. And in going with the flow, you're going to be enacting the Lord's plan. Okay, so that's why we have to fully trust in the Lord and always think spiritually and analyze and understand the Lord. If I'm in this situation, the fact that the Lord allowed it to get to this point, then that means this is he set it up this way. And there's something that's going on that either I don't understand or he's about to reveal or something. All right. So it's not really a cause for panic. Now, in the flesh, you may feel a little nervous, but that's why you have to remain spiritual to calm to, to counteract that fear and to balance it with faith. So it says, verse 18, there, there is that waxeth rich by, um, by his weariness and pinching and, uh, and his, and this, his portion, Salakia, and this, his, the portion of his reward. Okay. Because you have people that are constantly working and putting in work. There's a scripture that says, um, how can one that is constantly working you know, have that leisure, gain wisdom. Verse 19, whereas he saith, I have found rest and now will eat continually all my, um, eat continually of my goods. And yet he knoweth not what time shall come upon him and that he must leave those things to others and die. And that's why the scriptures tell us in the book of Ecclesiasticus, Salakia, in the book of Second Ezra 16, to be ye even as pilgrims, upon the earth him that 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 um uh selleth let him be as him that shall not profit and him that buyeth as one that shall lose you know roughly paraphrasing okay because you don't know what situation is going to rise and come upon you verse 20 be steadfast in thy covenant and be conversant therein and wax old in thy work so what is our work? To do the will of Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahushai, to prophesy, to teach, okay? To edify, to build up. That is our work. So we are supposed to wax old in this, meaning that there is no escape out of this. Until the job is done, you work and work and work. And, and the sooner you understand that this is now your life, the, the easier it will be, Okay? You, you don't wake up saying, oh, I got to breathe again. I can't wait to the point where I don't got to breathe anymore. <laughs> it says here, um, verse 21, marvel not at the works of sinners, but trust in the Lord and abide in thy labor. For it is an easy thing in the sight of the Lord on the sudden to make a poor man rich. You hear that? So, there, you know, of course, there are certain brothers that may be more well off than others, and certain brothers may always find themselves in a financial bind. And you wondering, damn, why? You know, if I be a man of the law, why, why I always gotta, you know, money? I'm always tight for money because the Lord has you in that position for a reason. Because the Lord, under, you know, the Lord says, look, this is this is how I can get the maximum work out of you because I know you. If I give you too much money. You too comfortable? I'm not gonna get the best that I want out of you, out of you, you know, or or whatever the case is. Okay, so just keep that in mind. It's because it, if you are struggling because of that, the Lord will still get you by, but there's a reason He has you in that position. It's deliberate because, as it says, yeah, it's easy. It's a, it's an easy thing. So the Lord, could, why why wouldn't the Lord just snap His fingers and and make you rich or give you money? Because it's deliberate. He has you in that position for a reason. The blessing of the Lord is in the reward of the godly. And suddenly he maketh his blessing flourish. You know, so sometimes you may be going through something or, you know, things may not be going right for you for a while, for a season. And then all of a sudden, everything just starts going right. You know, you pray and it's getting answered on the spot. You ask for this, boom. Before you ask, you know, boom. You know, everything is just working out conveniently for you. You know, and that's the Lord doing it. Because sometimes he just he just throws a shower of blessings on you, just 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 like a bucket, like he just pours it upon you. 
You know, and sometimes it's like little drops. And sometimes it's barely any drop at all. But there's always enough to keep you going. Because it's a balance. Verse 23, say not what profit is there of my service and what good things shall I have hereafter? See, well, I'm, well, we're doing all this, you know, but we're really, you know, why is it that we're doing this and we're constantly catching hell? You know, it doesn't feel like like we're, 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 we have the highest office. Look at the way people look at us and talk shit and all this, that, and the third. But that, if you're thinking like that, you're lacking, you're lacking that understanding. Okay, you're lacking the understanding because you need to look around you. <laughs> You need to go, go on RT News or something and look at what's going on in the world. And you'll understand what profit there is in your service and what good things are going to come hereafter. Because when the bad things start bad things start coming, okay, that's when, the, the as it says, then shall they be known who are my chosen. Okay, that's when the blessings are going to are gonna be magnified in the sight of the Lord. Because um, you may have a slice of bread right a slice of bread and a slice of bread is good but it's not going to be the first option for somebody right if you ask somebody yo you come you go to a restaurant and you have this menu with all these good things do you think the first thing on somebody's mind to go to a nice bougie delicacy restaurant and they're going to say i want a slice of bread no they're not going to say i want a slice of they're not going to say i want a peanut butter and jelly sandwich all right Peanut butter jelly in it. <laughs> All right, it's a joke. But no, they're not going to say that. See, so a peanut butter and jelly sandwich or sliced bread is not going to be the first option on somebody's mind. It's still good, but they'd rather get the, you know, the juicy steak and the potatoes and whatnot or the salmon or whatever it is. Now, say you eliminate the restaurant from there and say food is so scarce and you hungry two, three days, and you can barely even get a, a, a drop of water. And then you see that peanut butter jelly, uh, <laughs> peanut butter jelly sandwich, right? Peanut butter and jelly sandwich. At that point, I'm that 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 sandwich is going to be the highlight. At that point, nothing is going to come close to that, because when there's no food around, and you see that sandwich that would not have been your first choice, otherwise. That sandwich is all you want. It's all you're thinking about. You're like, damn, you know, it's been three days and there's a nice cold glass of water next to, oh, you'd kill for it. But hold on, you, a while back, people didn't even want to look tight. They, that's something I can make at home. I'm not worried about that. But now it's to the point where people would kill for it because the circumstances are so dire everything else went so low that it it, 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 looked, it made the sandwich look like it just skyrocketed right so these blessings and the things that the lord is is, is doing for us they're going to be made highlighted in the time of jacob's trouble the most leading up to your return because that's when all the all the, everything else the vanity is going to collapse and the only thing left standing just like that peanut butter jelly sandwich. And I'm not comparing the word of the Lord to a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, but I'm just giving the example. So just like that, people would now go from, yeah, that's my last choice, to I'm going to kill over it. That's how people are going to desire and seek the, the word of the Lord, the favor of the Lord. As to where now it's not even on their list of choices of things to seek. You see? So say not what profit is there in my service and what good things shall I have hereafter? Because you never know. Ver, uh, verse 24, again, say not I have enough and possess many things. And what evil shall I have hereafter? Because you have people like that that are living so comfortably that they think that their life is going to just keep going like that. You know, and it ain't no problem. I'm good. I got to I got to My job is so good. My life is so good. I, I'll take 20 shots if they ask me to. Because I don't want to lose it. I'm all right. It ain't going to do nothing to me. <laughs> oh, these people don't know. Verse 25. In the day of prosperity, there is a forgetfulness of affliction. See? And that's why we get on people telling them that sudden destruction is coming. Because they don't, they're not thinking about those things. 
either it's too scary for them or it is no i don't want to no no don't talk to me about that and eh, but but hold on how do you turn off the tv when it's when you are in the movie how do you press pause when the shit is happening around you how do you say i need a bathroom break when you're you're having to run for for your life not the character on the screen but you you cannot turn it off then you cannot hide from it then you can't close your ears to it then. So when we tell you about it now, it's to prepare you because that's the best way you can go into Jacob's trouble with a prepared mind. Because it doesn't matter if you don't believe it's going to come or not. That's not going to stop the fact that you have to go through it. So if you're going to go through it regardless, would it not be better to go through it better prepared? So people think not, not, not hearing about it now would make things better. It's not going to make things better. There are a lot of people that are in not the best situation because when we told them this very time that we are living in was going to happen, just a few months back, instead of taking heed and preparing themselves to put themselves in a better position, whether it was trying to find an online job while it was available or not turning down a certain offer and, and going for another, you know, but because they didn't want it, it was it was too depressing and too uncomfortable and too undesirable for them, they'd rather say, nah, I'll deal with it when it gets there and they make the wrong decision. And now it gets there is here and now they're wishing they could have gone back and prepared ahead to set themselves up for a better or a more decent manageable position now. Okay. Um, right, so verse 25, in the day of prosperity, there is a forgetfulness of affliction. And in the day of affliction, there is no more remembrance of prosperity. Because when you're catching hell, you would, the, the, mo, the current thing you're thinking about is this hell, this hell that you're catching and how you want it to be over. Okay? And, and the, the prosperity, even if it comes to your mind, it's not, you're not going to want to think about it. That's not going to be the mood that you're in. You see, when people go through shit, they're not in the mood because they're not thinking of prosperity. That's not what they're thinking of right now. That's not where their mind is at right now. That's not what they want to do right now because they're, 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 they're caught up in the shit. Verse 26, for it is an easy thing unto the Lord in the day of death to reward a man according to his ways. Yeah, because when when the, when the, the time comes, you know, the, the call time comes, you know, it. You thinking you you have escaped, but the way the Lord takes you out and, and, and him taking you out, you're going to get a cold reality check. All the shit that you've done is going to come back at you. Light work. When it says it's an easy thing, that means it's light work. All right. To put in modern day terms for you. Verse 27. The affliction of an hour maketh a man forget pleasure. And in his and in his end, his deeds shall be discovered. And this is why in the book of Isaiah, the 32nd chapter, it tells you, rise up, you women that are at ease, right? Mourn, because that time is coming. And when that hell comes, you're not going to remember the days of adventure, uh, of prosperity. You're not going to remember the, the days of happiness and joy, because you're going to be surrounded by such misery. And the Lord is going to, he's going to, he's going to drown you in it. All right, the Lord is going to drown you in calamity. Can you imagine that? As you're gasping for air and you're just being drowned by calamity? The Amos 5 and 19. Okay? So this is the book of... Um, uh, let's see. Hebrews chapter 10, uh, verse 31. It says, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. And as, and as I just went through, you know, why is it a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God? Because anybody else, you, you could run to the most high for help. And he can deliver you from anybody else because there's nobody above the Lord. But if the Lord, if the Lord is coming for you, who do you run to for help? See, that's the fear. The fear is, right? I'm going to give you an example of this fear. Let's go to the book of Psalms, um, chapter 139. And King David understood this. And starting at verse 7, it says, Whither shall I go from thy spirit? 
or whither shall I flee from thy presence? So when you fear someone or something, what's what's the initial instinctive thing you do? You run away from it. You try to avoid it. You try to get as far away as possible from it because a lot of people, if the fear is great, people are not ready to confront it. Hell no. What you mean? <laughs> you know, if there's a if there's somebody chasing you with a gun, you're not ready, you're not trying to confront that fear. You're trying to run. You're trying to get to what they call safety, right? And and safety is just somewhere where that fear cannot get to you. So, when now say that the Lord is the one after you, and you're trying to run, where are you gonna run to? Are you gonna run on the planet that the Lord considers his footstool? Or are you going to try to escape to another planet which the, is considered uh, uh, in the house of the Lord? Or do you think committing suicide is going to take you farther away from the Lord because your spirit goes right back to him? So where are you going to run to to escape the Lord? There is no escape. That's why it's so fearful. Because the Lord, <laughs> I mean, the, the kind of things the Lord can do to you you your mind is not capable of imagining and yet you cannot escape and then when the lord brings it upon you you have to go through it there is no shortcut and you have to go through it until the lord himself said and that's why micah said i will bear the indignation of, of the lord until he plead my cause because until the lord is satisfied you don't yes he's not done with you and you don't you don't get to escape so you know what's the best thing to do you don't end up in the hands of the Lord. You don't end up in a, in a position where the Lord wants to get your ass. You don't end up with the Lord as your enemy. So Psalm 139 and 7. Whither shall I go from thy spirit? Or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. Ah, hello, I'm here. All right, where are you going? <laughs> if I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. Got you. You know, where are you going? Right? If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me and thy right hand shall hold me. You're not escaping the Ha'obashim Yahushai. Escape, uh, 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 running is futile. Okay? It says here, If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light before me. <laughs> yea the darkness hideth not from thee but the night shineth as day the darkness and light are both alike to thee so that is one of the reasons you have to fear the lord because if, the, if you make an enemy out of the lord yo you you have you must have a death wish i'm sorry you must have a wish that goes beyond death because the lord the lord can can get your ass beyond death the Lord can make your life so bad, you, you, you're going to seek death as a cure. That's the power we serve. All right. That's Yahweh. Bahashem Yahweh Shai. That's the almighty God. That's the God of the Hebrews. That's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's the God of the Bible. That's the man of war. The creator. The most high. That's him. Okay. For you to understand. So it, it only stands to reason that these people in their folly don't understand or know who the God of the Bible is. And as a matter of fact, they don't understand what he's capable of. And for those who claim to understand it, they don't believe it. That's the only valid explanation as to why they're doing the madness they're doing today. Because guess what? When the Lord says, you know what, niggas? It's time for you to learn the hard way. When he die, I'm, 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 I'm done with the shit. And he takes that belt off. The whole world is going to get an ass whooping. Okay. One, one, one whip of the belt and your ass falls off. All right. One cheek is in Arizona. The other cheek is in Alaska somewhere. <laughs> you know, that's that power whip. <laughs> All right. But nevertheless, that's what the Lord is going to do. Okay, he's man, Hell is gonna get there. and that's why we do the things we do with fear. Okay, we serve the Lord with fear and with trembling, and we seek our our salvation with fear and with trembling because we know what the we know what the Hawabashim is capable of and we know what he's planning to do. 
And we don't want to, we don't want to get caught up in that. Okay? So yeah, the, the the time you should be afraid is really the position that the world is in right now. Oh, you should be more than afraid. You should be very, very afraid. Okay? And that's why we warn people to get their actions together, but they will not hear. Romans 11 and 34, for who hath known the mind of the Lord? Or who hath been his counselor? Or who hath first given to him and it shall be recompensed unto him again? So who's going, who, you know what I'm saying? Who has the upper hand of the Lord? Who Who's going to counsel the most high? Who created counsel? The concept of counsel came from the Lord. Who's going to impart wisdom unto the Lord who created wisdom? Whose breath is wisdom? Who's going to give understanding to the Lord? One that one that was given understanding by the Lord? What? How are you who was blessed with understanding from the Lord going to now impart understanding to the Lord? <laughs> you got to... Listen, the gap between the Most High and man is, 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 is beyond infinite. All right? That's why the Lord said... Just trust in him, man. Just, just look. Just, just trust in the Lord. That's it. Just trust in the Lord. Ain't nothing you can do, bro. Absolutely nothing. Like your thoughts don't even come close to, to, to what's really going on. All right. You're like a two-year-old in the ring with Mike Tyson in his prime, and even that's not a good enough comparison. All right. Verse uh, thirty-six. For of him, and through him, and to him, are all things. To whom be glory forever. Amen. All right. And so with that, I'm going to end it here. Lord willing, that was edifying unto the elect. In closing, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Racha Kudash. And until next time, Shalom.